scientific basis, and physiology. Fertility awareness-based methods stand on a strong scientific foundation. This section covers the most important research that made these highly reliable methods possible. Before we continue, let me ask you a question. What do you think of when you hear the term NFP, or fertility awareness-based method? In the late 1920s, researchers Dr. Ogino and Naus independently discovered that ovulation occurs on average 14 days before the first day of the menses. Using this fact and the approximate lifespan of the egg and sperm, they and other physicians who studied their work independently developed formulas to estimate the fertile time in a woman's cycle. These methods were called the calendar rhythm method, or later simply rhythm, due to Dr. Leo Latz's popular book published in 1932. Using this method, couples would use specific formulas to calculate their fertile time based on the woman's previous menstrual cycles. In the 1930s and 40s, this was one of the most effective forms of family planning available. Today, most people who report using the rhythm method actually use their own devised calendar method based on guesswork and not on the original method, which was based on the formula that had been developed by doctors Latz, Smulders, and others. More importantly, from the mid-20th century, more versatile and effective natural methods have been developed. These are the FABMs that will be discussed in this course. FABMs allow couples to prospectively identify their fertile period by observing the woman's signs of fertility. FABM research demonstrates them to be effective for both avoiding and achieving pregnancy, a point we will discuss in detail later in the course. There are three key components needed to conceive a baby quality sperm, an ovum or egg, and good cervical fluid or mucus. If one of these is missing, a couple cannot become pregnant. As you know, a man provides sperm and a woman provides an ovum when she ovulates. However, you may not know that good cervical fluid is also essential for couples to conceive a baby naturally. Under the influence of estrogen and progesterone, the cervix produces and secretes visibly different types of fluid throughout a woman's cycle. Several days prior to ovulation when she is fertile, she produces a clear, slippery, and or stretchy type of fluid that appears similar to raw egg white. This fertile type of cervical mucus or fluid facilitates capacitation and transportation of the sperm in the woman's reproductive tract. Without this type of fluid produced in the cervix, sperm will die in the acidic vagina and not reach the ovum in the fallopian tubes for conception to occur. These three components are simple, but powerful, because the presence of each is necessary for pregnancy. As you know, it takes both a man and a woman to contribute to the creation of a new human being. Healthy men are almost always fertile. Although a man's fertility may decrease with age, once a man goes through puberty, he can continually produce sperm and thus father a child even in his senior years. Women, on the other hand, are almost always infertile. Ovulation occurs on only one day in each cycle, and the egg will survive less than 12 to 24 hours if not fertilized. Fertile cervical fluid is critical for the effect of filtration, transport, nurturing, and survival of sperm, and thus helps define the narrow window of time which a couple can conceive. This phase of time, the fertile window, is determined by a woman's hormones. In healthy women, it typically lasts three to six days per cycle. Over the course of one year, a woman is only fertile for at most 70 to 80 days, or about 20% of the time. This begs the question, why then do we advise that women use artificial birth control and thus expose them to the hormonal side effects on a daily basis when they are only fertile for a very short period of time? When a couple understands these basic facts about their reproductive function, together they can learn to identify their fertile window and modify their behavior accordingly based on their family planning goals. Scientific Basis of Fertility Awareness Now that we have identified the three key components of fertility, let's see how and when they work together. Let's first discuss the normal female anatomy and how it is involved in conception. Around ovulation, the cervix produces and secretes fluid that helps sperm swim up the cervix, survive in the crypts, and ultimately reach the ovum. Ova are produced and mature in the ovaries. During ovulation, usually one ovum is released into the fallopian tube. When a sperm and an ovum meet in the fallopian tubes, fertilization occurs, and a genetically unique human being is created. The developing human embryo travels down and implants in the uterine wall, 
where the fetus will continue to grow. After implantation, hormones are released that will maintain the uterine lining. The menstrual cycle. Let's now turn our attention to the physiological effects of hormones during the menstrual cycle and how they affect fertility. The first day of menses and the beginning of follicular phase is called day one. Follicle stimulating hormone or FSH stimulates the growth and recruitment of ovarian follicles in the ovary. After a few days, usually only one, but sometimes two follicles dominate. The others atrophy and die. The developing follicles secrete estrogen, which causes glands in the cervix to produce the fertile type of fluid. It also initiates the growth of the endometrium. At first, the increase in estrogen causes a suppression of LH or luteinizing hormone. But when estradiol reaches a threshold level, mid-cycle, it causes an LH surge, resulting in ovulation. During ovulation, the follicle ruptures and releases its ovum into the fallopian tube. Ovulation usually occurs only once per cycle, and fertilization can only occur after the ovum is released and before it dies, within 12 to 24 hours. Even if there are two or more ova released, this occurs within 24 hours of the single LH peak. After ovulation, the luteal phase begins. The ruptured follicle transforms into the corpus luteum and begins secreting progesterone within 24 hours of ovulation. The secretion of progesterone maintains the thickened endometrium to allow for the implantation of the human embryo at about 7 to 10 days after conception. Progesterone also dries up cervical fluid and raises the basal body temperature. Increasing levels of progesterone suppress FSH and LH production. FSH and LH levels fall, and if pregnancy has not occurred, the corpus luteum atrophies. Without the corpus luteum, progesterone levels drop and stop maintaining the uterine lining or endometrium, so menstruation happens and the next cycle begins. The length of the cycle and of each phase varies from woman to woman and even from cycle to cycle in the same woman. Although the average menstrual cycle is 28 days, only about 10% of all cycles are actually 28 days in length. 21 to 35 days is considered the normal range for cycle length. That's why it's important to know the components of fertility which correspond to the phases of the cycle. Observable effects of the hormones. Now that we have reviewed a woman's hormonal cycle, we can identify their influence on changes that can be observed externally in her body. At the beginning of the follicular phase, cervical fluid is thick like mucus and usually does not leave the cervix. This typically causes women to note dryness in the vulvar area, indicating infertility. As estrogen rises before ovulation, it becomes more watery, stretchy, and slippery. The fertile cervical fluid is only present for a few days of the cycle as the estrogen rises leading up to ovulation when the egg is released. Both the fertile cervical fluid and egg are necessary for conception to occur. This means that a couple is only fertile for up to six days each cycle and infertile for a much longer time. Just prior to ovulation, estrogen levels fall, which triggers a rapid rise in the luteinizing hormone or LH level. This LH surge triggers ovulation. With ovulation, progesterone levels increase. This rise in progesterone causes the cervical fluid to become thick and impermeable, acting like a barrier or plug to sperm. Progesterone also causes a rise in the woman's basal body temperature, or BBT. What is amazing about these changes is that any woman can use the external observations of fertility to learn about the internal activity, and therefore, the times of natural fertility or infertility in her cycle. Researchers have known about the different types of cervical fluid or mucus throughout the menstrual cycle since before the first birth control pill was available. In 1952, Dr. Cohen described cervical mucus around ovulation. He published a schemata of its physical characteristics, including viscosity, quantity, spin barket, or the ability to spin into a thread, and the presence of leukocytes. Most importantly, he found that mucus type correlates to sperm survival, so he called it a biological valve. Schematic of cervical fluid. Meanwhile, 
Since 1959, Professor Eric Odeblad has done extensive research on the cervix and he discovered different types of cervical mucus. Initially, he described the type E high estrogen and type G high progesterone or low estrogen mucus and mapped where they came from in the cervix. Through ongoing work, he has subsequently identified additional subtypes of estrogenic mucus, type L, S, and P. Dr. Odeblad found that when type E fluid is present, fluid is thin and stretchy with low leukocytes. This enables sperm to have a high survival rate. When this type E fluid is first produced at the beginning of the fertile window, a woman may feel it at the vulva even before she can see it. In the graphic, note how the type E mucus forms channels. These channels help sperm move into the uterine cavity. If they reach the fallopian tubes, fertilization can occur there. Since type E cervical fluid and its subtypes function to help sperm survive and reach the ovum, it is only present during the fertile window prior to ovulation. Contrast this to the type G fluid or mucus, which lacks these channels. Type G fluid creates an impermeable barrier that prevents the sperm from entering the cervix. It is secreted under the influence of progesterone. The three components of fertility define an actual fertile window each cycle during which a woman can become pregnant. By observing external signs, a couple can approximately identify that fertile window. Scientists have studied the probability of pregnancy from intercourse on days relative to ovulation. Ultrasound and hormonal studies show that the length of the fertile window varies from less than one day to more than five days, with the fertile phase most frequently lasting three days. This means that together a man and a woman are likely only fertile for three days each cycle and at most six days per cycle. That's a very narrow period of time during which a couple can become pregnant. Although it is rare, sperm can live in the fertile mucus in a woman's cervical crypts for up to five days, and fertilization can occur 12 to 24 hours post-ovulation. Thus, there is a maximum of six days, five days prior and the day of ovulation when a couple can conceive. The highest probability of pregnancy, between 25 and 28 percent, is when intercourse happens on the two days before ovulation and it decreases to a 0% probability by the end of the day after ovulation. Visible signs of fertility. In summary, cervical mucus and ovulation together define the fertile window. How do we recognize it? The same hormones that control ovulation also modulate the observable signs of fertility. A couple can determine the fertile window and use it according to their family planning goals. Let's review the visible effects of the woman's hormones. During the follicular phase of the cycle, a developing follicle secretes estrogen. This causes the cervix to produce the clear, stretchy, egg white-like fluid. This is a sign of fertility because it allows sperm to live in the cervix awaiting the ovum. An LH spike causes the follicle to open and release the ovum, resulting in ovulation. At this time, some women experience sharp lower abdominal pains known as middle schmerz. However, this is not a precise sign of ovulation as the pain can be due either to the stretching of the peritoneum prior to ovulation or to hemorrhage into the peritoneum after ovulation. It can occur as long as 48 hours after ovulation. The ruptured follicle becomes the corpus luteum. It secretes progesterone to maintain the uterine lining and dries up the mucus indicating the closing of the fertile window. The rise in progesterone causes the basal body temperature to rise, a change that can be observed by using a basal body thermometer. Finally, as the corpus luteum atrophies, it stops secreting progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone begin to drop about three days prior to menses. Then at that time, the uterine lining sheds, resulting in the menstrual period, which is observable.